Thank you, Darby, for that wonderful presentation. Now we will discuss calculating maximum daily dose for orally administered products. Have you ever read a labeling and you're unsure what the maximum daily dose is? Hopefully at the end of this presentation, you will have a better grasp of determining the maximum daily dose and how you may seek guidance when it is not clear or if you are unsure of the acceptability of your proposed excipient levels. This presentation reflects the views of the author and should not be construed to represent US FDA's views or policies. In the next 20 minutes or so, we will discuss what is the maximum daily dose and why it is important, how to determine the maximum daily dose by walking through some simple examples followed by some more complicated examples in which the maximum daily dose is not clearly defined in the labeling, and finally, some special considerations. The maximum daily dose is the highest dose that a patient may be administered in one day. The correct maximum daily dose is important to accurately determine the maximum daily exposure of each excipient and to ensure the maximum daily exposures are within levels of FDA approved drug products to ensure that your proposed excipient levels are safe. And generally, when you are determining the maximum daily dose, the information is found in the dosage and administration section of the reference listed drug or reference standard labeling. A few considerations when determining the maximum daily dose include, in general, when a drug product is available in multiple strengths, the maximum daily exposure for excipients in the lower strengths should be based on the maximum daily dose using lower strengths when such dosing regimens are realistic in clinical practice. In determining the maximum daily dose based on body surface area or body weight, unless the reference listed drug or reference standard labeling specifies otherwise, the maximum daily dose is calculated assuming a body surface area of 1.62 meters squared or a body weight of 60 kilograms. Let's walk through some simple examples together to gain a better understanding. We'll start with a straightforward example with Celebrex capsules. Per the dosage and administration section of the labeling, there are five indications. For osteoarthritis, the maximum daily dose is 200 milligrams. For rheumatoid arthritis, patients may be administered 200 milligrams twice daily so the maximum daily dose is 400 milligrams. For juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, patients greater than 25 kilograms may receive 100 milligrams twice daily, so the maximum daily dose is 200 milligrams. For ankylosing spondylitis, the maximum daily dose is 400 milligrams. And finally, for the management of acute pain and treatment of primary dysmenorrhea, the dosage is 400 milligrams initially with an additional 200 milligram dose if needed on the first day. So the maximum daily dose is 600 milligrams. Therefore, based on all of the indications for Celebrex, the maximum daily dose is 600 milligrams based on the recommended dosing for the management of acute pain and treatment of primary dysmenorrhea. Our next example is one in which the reference drug labeling specifies the maximum daily dose for each strength. Lyrica CR extended release tablets is available in 82.5 milligram, 165 milligram, and 330 milligram strengths. There are two indications. Neuropathic pain associated with diabetic peripheral neuropathy in which the maximum daily dose is 330 milligrams once daily. For postopedic neuralgia, patients who do not experience sufficient pain relief following two to four weeks of treatment with 330 milligrams once daily and who are able to tolerate Lyrica CR may be treated with up to 660 milligrams once daily. To achieve a maximum daily dose of 660 milligrams, this could be based on eight 82.5 milligram tablets. However, the RLD labeling specifies the number of tablets to use when switching from Lyrica to Lyrica CR. In the left column, we have the Lyrica total daily dose, and in the right column is the Lyrica CR dose. 
If a patient is taking 75 milligrams of Lyrica daily, the Lyrica CR dose is 82.5 milligrams. A patient taking 150 milligrams of Lyrica daily would take 165 milligrams of Lyrica CR. If a patient is taking 225 milligrams of Lyrica daily, the Lyrica CR dose would be 247.5 milligrams. And to achieve the CR dose, the footnote specifies that it is three 82.5 milligram tablets. If a patient is taking 450 milligrams of Lyrica daily, the CR dose would be 495 milligrams per day. And the footnote specifies that it, to achieve this, three of the 165 milligram tablets should be taken once a day. Similarly, for the 600 milligram Lyrica dose, the CR dose of 660 milligrams is achieved by taking two of the 330 milligram tablets. The maximum number of tablets for each strength to be used for maximum daily exposure calculations are specified in the labeling. Therefore, keep in mind that the labeling's limits on the number of units impacts the maximum daily exposure for excipients in different strengths. If you recall, a body surface area of 1.62 meters squared is used when the labeling does not specify. However, one example in which the dosage and administration section of the labeling specifies the body surface area to use to calculate the maximum daily dose is targeting capsules. As you can see in the left column, the labeling has recommended doses for specific body surface areas ranging from 0.88 all the way up to 2.62 meters squared. The initial dose is 300 milligram per meter squared per day, which may be lowered if necessitated by the toxicity. However, based on this initial total daily dose of 300 milligram per meter squared per day, and the highest body surface area of 2.62 meters squared, the total daily dose is 750 milligrams or 1075 milligram capsules. However, the dosage and administration section also states that, that if there is no tumor response after eight weeks of treatment, and if the initial dose is well tolerated, the dose may be escalated to 400 milligrams per meter squared per day. Therefore, the maximum daily dose is 1,000 milligrams or 14 capsules. So keep in mind that although a body surface area of 1.62 meters squared is generally used, some reference labeling specifies a different body surface area to determine the maximum daily dose. Now for our first challenge question. True or false? When determining maximum daily dose based on body surface area or body weight, the maximum daily dose is always calculated using 1.62 meters squared for body surface area or 60 kilograms for body weight. And this statement is false, since 1.62 meters squared or 60 kilograms are not always used to determine maximum daily dose. Determining the maximum daily dose is not always straightforward as we saw in the previous examples. So let's walk through some complicated examples together. And these are just some examples where the language or information is not clear in a product labeling. For Lamictal XR extended release tablets, the dosage and administration section of the labeling is about six pages, but I'll just highlight some of the relevant information. This table for patients age 13 and older has dosing for patients with various concomitant medications. And it states that the maintenance dose in patients taking carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarb, or primidone and not taking valproate is 400 to 600 milligrams every day, as shown in the fourth column. As you can see, this is the highest dose in this table. However, 
If you read further into the dosage and administration section of Lamictal XR labeling, the initial dose should match the total daily dose of immediate release lamotrigine. Therefore, we need to refer to another product labeling to see if that impacts the maximum daily dose of Lamictal XR. The dosage and administration section of Lamictal labeling is over 11 pages and contains six tables for recommended dosing in various patients, so I'll just highlight some of the information. If one looks at the tables and identifies the highest dose, it is 500 milligrams per day for patients older than 12 years with epilepsy, and this is the usual maintenance dose for patients taking carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, or primidone, and not taking valproate. However, if you look past the tables and read further into the dosage and administration section of Lamictal labeling, it states that in patients receiving multi-drug regimens employing carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, or primidone without valproate, maintenance doses of adjunctive lamictal as high as 700 milligrams per day have been used. This recommended dose is higher than that in the table on the previous slide of 500 milligrams per day for the same patient population. Therefore, the message I want to drive home is it is important to look at all dosage and administration aspects to determine if the maximum daily dose may be affected when converting to a different dosage form. To obtain clarity when one is not sure about the acceptable levels of a proposed inactive ingredient, a controlled correspondence may be submitted. An example where the maximum daily dose is ambiguous is for Phospholyra oral solution. Per the dosage administration section of the labeling, the recommended initial dose of Phospholyra for the adult dialysis patient is 10 milliliters with each meal, and most patients require 15 to 20 milliliters with each meal. How many meals per day would this patient population generally eat? The dosage administration section is silent with regard to the number of meals per day. Is the maximum daily dose based on 20 milliliters with three meals per day, even though this is for most patients and three meals is a typical scenario? If one is concerned about the remaining patient population and acceptability of maximum daily exposures is uncertain, a controlled correspondence may be submitted. Another example where the maximum daily dose is ambiguous is for Amicar tablets. Per the dosage administration section of the labeling, for the treatment of acute bleeding syndromes due to elevated fibrinolytic activity, it is suggested that five grams be administered during the first hour of treatment, followed by a continuing rate of one gram per hour. This method of treatment would ordinarily be continued for about eight hours until the bleeding situation has been controlled. But what if dosing beyond eight hours is required to control the bleeding? When the duration of treatment is unclear, a controlled correspondence may be submitted to request clarification. One last example is for Orphidin capsules, which is available in 2 mg, 5 mg, 10 mg, and 20 mg strengths. Per the dosage and administration section of the labeling, a maximum total daily dosage of 2 mg per kilogram may be needed. Assuming a body weight of 60 kg, the maximum daily dose is 120 mg. If we determine the excipient maximum daily exposures, Based on the 2 mg capsules, this would be 60 capsules per day, which is not realistic in clinical practice, and a higher strength would be used to achieve this maximum daily dose of 120 mg. Therefore, when clinical practicality is uncertain, a controlled correspondence may be submitted to request guidance. A few things to consider. As I mentioned in the last few examples, if determining the maximum daily dose is complicated, ambiguous, or if the maximum number of units could be limited by clinical practicality, and when the acceptability of your proposed excipient levels is uncertain, a controlled correspondence may be submitted to request confirmation or clarification of the maximum daily dose. Additionally, some excipients have safety concerns in special populations such as pediatric or renally impaired patients. 
In these instances, the maximum daily dose in the specific patient population is considered to appropriately evaluate the maximum daily exposure of excipients with safety concerns. For our second challenge question, which of the following is true when determining the maximum daily dose of a drug product? A, it is important to determine the correct maximum daily dose so that one may accurately evaluate the maximum daily exposure of each excipient in a drug product. B, the maximum daily dose is generally determined from information in the dosage and administration section of the reference product labeling. C, the maximum daily dose of a drug product may be impacted by converting to a different dosage form, or D, all of the above. And the answer is D. All of these statements are true. In conclusion, the correct maximum daily dose is important to accurately determine the maximum daily exposure of each excipient in a drug product. It is important to look at all dosage and administration aspects to determine the correct maximum daily dose. For example, if it is impacted by converting to a different dosage form. The maximum number of units administered in one day could be limited by clinical practicality and a controlled correspondence may be submitted to get clarification of a maximum daily dose or acceptability of a proposed excipient maximum daily exposure. Thank you for listening, and I will be back for the question and answer session a little later.